All right. Let's get into our kids' sermon quiz and our word for the day for the kiddos that will keep count of that. And uh, through the message, here we go. What was the sweet roll cut with? There's a sweet roll. On a slide, it's being sliced. And what is it cut with? A knife, a fork, a spoon, or a plastic gym card? Number two, what passages gave a biblical example, or what passage, I believe it should say, gave a biblical example of a resolution in the sermon? So at one point, we're going to look up a few verses that are examples of resolutions, not necessarily New Year's resolutions, but resolutions people made in the Bible. And uh, will we be in Psalms 101, Genesis 3, 1 John 4, or John 3? And then a kid's sermon quiz, fill in the blank. Cease to do what? Learn to do what? That will be on the last slide of the sermon today, right from Scripture. And then... If you're keeping count of a word through the message today, then uh, you'll see Sister Bev. She'll be out at the welcome desk uh, to get your lollipop for keeping up with that through the sermon today. I tell you what, I have been impressed. I didn't come up with this idea. Different ministers down through the years have, have done it at different times. But to do it here and try it and see how many, I'm talking small kids that have listened to every single word of the sermon and know how often that word is used. That has been well worth a few lollipops. I tell you, it's been a blessing. Let's get into our message for today. Hindsight 2020. It has been said that hindsight is 2020. In other words, perfect vision. But in just a few days, on January 1, it really will be true that 2020 is now hindsight. And apparently some of us are ready for that. <laughs> How do you feel about this past year? I don't mean the challenges we faced in our world and society. From a pandemic to political upheaval, and different issues and challenges in our world. I'm talking about how do you feel about your personal walk with the Lord and how you lived this last year. In most cultures around the world, the close of one year, the beginning of another, it's customary to take some time to reflect, to look back upon the past time frame, to look forward and then make course corrections as deemed necessary. That idea is not foreign to the Bible. In fact, the Hebrew culture... Going back to the original biblical culture, that was something that, that was done. Maybe not exactly the same way, and certainly even a different calendar system than we use today. In fact, uh, the Passover was in the first month of the new year on the Jewish calendar, and that whole part was about the reflection and beginning a new year, reflecting, making course correction, and moving forward. So we're going to talk a little bit about resolutions today. That's right. Resolutions. Now, what well, we're going to look at some examples from the Bible are not specifically New Year's resolutions. You can make a change and a new start at any time. But there are times where uh, we are challenged and, and, and easier as we think through uh, time to, to process that. Uh, but sometimes resolutions, New Year's resolutions, they don't stick too well. This one guy had one that he thought he was going to be able to keep. His New Year's resolution was to start using his gym card more. So he started using it to slice his sweet roll. <laughs> That's true. You can't make this stuff up. In FSU News, How to Make Your New Year's Resolutions Last, the writer posed that 71% of New Year's resolutions revolve around weight loss and fitness. The next most common resolutions at 47% focus on improving physical health and eating better. Now, I'm from Mississippi, and math's not my thing, but that didn't add up. That, that wasn't adding up to 100% or, or even within an acceptable parameter. And then I, I realized what the author must be trying to communicate without saying, and that is that people oftentimes have more than one resolution. And so I'm reading it with that premise, okay? 
And so then it says, learning new skills and hobbies, practicing self-care and spending more time with family and friends follow at approximately 15% each. Well, those, those are good things. Do better on your health. Three different years. In my adult years, I've begun uh, the new year with a 90-day raw food challenge. Yeah. I got over that. It, it, it was one that it worked pretty well, all raw for 30 days. Yeah, and then I took a day off from it, so raw six days of the week for the second 30 days, and then a goal to eat raw about 80% of the time for the other 30 days. I lost a tremendous amount of weight both times, but one of the things I've discovered about these crash diets, I, I at times do have the self-discipline to pull them off and lose a massive amount of weight, but my body does what it's supposed to and regains all of it and then a little bit. And uh, I'm convinced at this point that uh, I would be slimmer today had I never done those things. <laughs> but I don't know. But resolutions about health, resolutions about um, uh, improving our physical health and eating better, all of these things common and can be good. And then, of course, more time around friends and family, improving ourselves, hobbies. These are all nice things. But what did resolutions in the Bible look like? I'm going to give you four, okay? The first is in Psalms 101. So kids sermon quiz making it easy for you today. The first one we're going to look up is in Psalms 101. Let's look here. Resolutions in the Bible. And it says here, Psalms 101, verses 2 and 3. Psalms 101, 2 and 3. Now, again, not necessarily New Year's resolution at all, but a resolution nonetheless. And it says, Psalms 101, 2 and 3, I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And then it says in verse 3, I will set only a few wicked things before my eyes after the kids have gone to sleep. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Now notice the link between setting wicked, thing before our, wicked things before our eyes and those that fall away. That's right there in the verse, isn't it? Yeah. Because Satan knows it's an overall leavening, long-term process to bring about people's demise. When I read this verse, I think today that one of the things that we could reflect upon at the end of a year like this, especially those who were in quarantine and binge-watching episodes, is our entertainment choices. Okay? That's one to consider. And then we'll look here, Daniel 1 and verse 8. Here's another resolution in the Bible, if you will. And... Uh, Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, many of you know right where we're going, more specifically than even just the reference, you know what it says. Let's go there and see it. Daniel 1 and verse 8, here it is. And it says in God's Word today, Daniel 1 and verse 8, but Daniel purposed, a stalwart commitment, if you will. He purposed in his heart he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's uh, meat or with the wine which he drank. In fact, he requested a diet of vegetables and water. And so this would be a verse to think about um, a resolution regarding health and lifestyle, would it not? Yeah. Here's another one in the area of finances. Go with me to Genesis chapter 28 and verse 22. Genesis 28 and verse 22. We see it here. Genesis 28, 22. Genesis 28 and verse 22. We see it in the Word. Genesis 28, 22. This is Jacob. He made a special commitment to God here. We read about it. It says, And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be uh, God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a what? A tenth to you. So this was a resolution in regards to finances, tithing in this case. In the Bible, you have tithes, you have offerings, and uh, they're, they're separate. Tithe has a certain purpose. And then uh, God directs that to go to support of the spreading of the gospel. Specifically, people say, what about helping the poor and needy? Uh, that is there in Scripture too. That comes from offerings. That's why there's tithes and offerings, you see, in the Bible. And then, of course, if we're going to think about uh, resolutions in the area of finances, I could give you extra verses on this, but for the sake of time and the direction of the message today, I won't turn to others. But I will add there, perhaps, getting out of debt 
as one along with the finances, tithes, offerings, getting out of debt. So we're talked about uh, resolutions in the Bible dealing perhaps with entertainment choices, uh, dealing with health and lifestyle, resolutions in the Bible that deal with the financial area of our life, whether tithe, offering, or debt. And uh, the next one, Psalms 119. The book of Psalms is really full of resolutions David made, commitments that he made, if you will. Psalms 119, let's look there. And it says here, Psalms 119, another example of a resolution. Psalms 119, verse 15. It says, I will meditate on your precepts. So thinking about God's teachings, God's word, and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Now, what's one of the ways that this resolution is carried out? Through spending thoughtful time, perhaps reading the Bible. Would that be one way? Absolutely. And so as we think of uh, reviewing this last year, Let's think of these four resolutions we've read in the Bible. Then we'll turn the page and move forward. Entertainment choices. How did your entertainment choices go? Here we sit at the end of this year, looking into the next year. Would there be any need for adjustment there between you and the Lord? What about health and lifestyle? Guys, I'm not up here preaching at you, especially in regards to this one. I've got some work to do. You know, I come from the largest state in the United States. People go, oh, you're from Alaska? No, no, I didn't say the largest geographical state. Mississippi, pound per pound, is the largest state, no joke, in the nation. And I grew up, they, they know how to cook it to taste great down there. And it stays with you. It sure does. And so... Health and lifestyle. Certainly, you know, I decided to, to run a half marathon this fall, and I, I did that, and, and then came Thanksgiving, and now Christmas has come, and I probably lose more pounds in, 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 in a year than some people weigh the whole year, but I tend to lose them, gain them back, lose them, gain them back, lose them, gain them back, and so I'm looking for some consistency myself. My kids have the, have the metabolism I used to have, and, and so they eat the food that they do, and a part of my problem is their food looks so good in the cabinet. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not preaching at you here today. I'm trying to journey with you. Uh, these things certainly apply to me as well. But resolutions, they tend to fade, you know. They tend to fade. Here's one guy that at the end of the year, he's reviewing what he planned at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, he was going to lose 15 pounds. At the end of the year, he says he still has 35 to go. <laughs> losing ground. Do you ever feel like you're losing ground and, you know, what's the use? A lot of people feel that way. In that article I was quoting earlier, the author goes on to say, on average, 80% of New Year's resolutions fail by the second week of February. I remember I was a member of a gym once and was actually going pretty regular and exercising. And then came the first part of January and the, uh, the place was absolutely packed. You couldn't hardly find a parking place in the parking lot. You get in there and every machine is full. And one of the other guys that came pretty regular, I'm like, man, what's this? He goes, oh, New Year's resolutions. Is this your first year at the gym? Like, yeah. He said, don't worry, we'll have it back to ourselves by February. <laughs> sure enough, back to normal. 80% of New Year's resolutions fail by the second week of February. So it's kind of become a laughing stock for many of us. I remember uh, I heard a stand-up comedian years ago. He said, I just quit smoking and the audience clapped for him. And he said five minutes ago, that was the punchline. Everybody laughed. Why? Because we have the ability to stop. We just don't have the ability a lot of times to stay stopped. Right? Right? It got to the point that one year my resolution was not to make any more resolutions. How many of you have been there, done that? I'm going to share with you, there's many that could be shared, I'm sure. One Bible tip for lasting change. Some say, you know, don't try to do too much at once. And some say, uh, you know, don't... Um, don't try to do too many at once. And these all might be practical pieces of advice. But there's lots of things out there. But I'm going to share one that made a difference for me, particularly in the area of music in a little bit. And it's right from the Bible. And I think may be a blessing for you. Turn me to Isaiah chapter 1. Let's look at it. Isaiah chapter 1. 
a tip for lasting change when it comes to making changes. You know, life is about making changes. And uh, we do need to develop ways to make lasting change in our lives. This is important. The gospel holds the key to it. And yet, many of us have believed the gospel all of our life, and yet we're still struggling with making lasting change. So let's look here and see another, another important tip. Okay, Isaiah chapter 1. Here we are. Isaiah 1, verse 16. Now, now, it's the end of verse 16, beginning of verse 17. Actually, beginning of verse 17 where, where the tip is. But, but stay with me. We've got to get there through verse 16. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. Years ago, someone shared a clip with me, and I watched it. I didn't mention it in the first uh, sermon today, but uh, one of the people that was in the first sermon today sent it to me on my phone as a link. So obviously it tied in enough that someone else saw it. It was about a, 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 a comedian playing like he was uh, a psychologist or counselor. And the person was in there, they had a phobia. In this case, I think it was about being buried alive in a box. And his advice was, stop it. She said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, stop it. Well, stop what? Well, stop being afraid of being buried alive in a box. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. No, stop it. And yet, that is what oftentimes our religious walk becomes about is, stop it. No, 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 don't, 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 stop, stop, stop. Just stop it. But if that worked, we wouldn't have issues, would we? You know why? We would just stop it. <laughs> Obviously, there's something more. The reason it was a punchline that the comedian had been uh, done smoking for five minutes is we have no problem stopping something. It's that we have a problem staying stopped. Here's one tip the Bible has. Of course, we see wash yourselves, make you clean. I want to be clear that Scripture is clear. There's no way we can clean ourselves up that Jesus cleans us up. We go to Him. He cleanses us. He washes us. The Bible is clear on this. And yet, if we just clean up but we don't fill up, we're going to continue to have issue. Notice it says here, end of verse 16, cease to do evil, learn to do what? Good. That's a Bible tip right there. Don't just stop. Start. Don't just stop. Start. Keep your finger here. Go with me to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Matthew 12. As you turn there, I, I remember years and years ago, I, I made a decision to put aside some music. It wasn't very wholesome. And I put it aside. But after a while, I went back to it. And then, I put it aside again, but that time, I started listening to other music in its place. That was better music. That time, it stuck. What was the difference? With the one, I stopped doing something, and it left a void in my life. And eventually, I fell back into something to fill the void. The other, I stopped doing something, but I put something better in its place and filled that spot pretty well. I didn't go back to it. This may not be a fix for everything and everything you face, but it is certainly a tip that can be helpful and has been helpful to me. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Don't just stop. Start. Don't just stop, start. Think about it. Are you there in Matthew chapter 12? Let's look here in verse 43. Here it is. It says, 
When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds nothing. This is a demon, an unclean spirit cast out of someone. Then he says, I'll return to my house, referring to the person he was cast out of from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Now, swept and put in order sounds good. The evil's been put away. It's been cleaned up. But it's empty. It's empty. That was the problem. You see, when we just stop but we don't start, we can be empty. Now you say, fill it up with Jesus. Yes, fill it up with Jesus. But I'm going to tell you, there's practical steps that are a part of that. For me, putting aside one kind of music... I found putting more wholesome music in its place helped fill that void up. Helped fill that void up. It says here he finds an empty swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. These are the words of Jesus to the people of his day, the Pharisees. Very heavy words. But I think that they lend credence to what we're talking about today. Don't just stop. Start. Don't just stop and clean things up. Start moving in a good direction and fill things up. There's a principle here. Now, if you step your finger there in Isaiah chapter 1, let's go back there regardless. Isaiah chapter 1. And I'm going to show you, this might be surprising to you as to what the Bible is saying to fill up with when you stop. And it says, verse 17, learn to do good. End of verse 16, cease to do evil. Verse 17, learn to do good. Well, what is, yeah, what is the good? Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Now there's certainly nothing wrong with ceasing to do good and learning to do well and, and things that benefit you. Like the examples I've given thus far. Stopping one kind of music and, and trying to move in a more wholesome direction. But in the context of this passage, it is saying stop doing evil through your own selfishness and begin to help others that need it. You know, we could get the principle from Scripture and not have to get it from modern psychology today, but it seems we fail to do that so many times. But modern psychologists will tell you that, at least many of them, one of the best ways to find happiness is do things that benefit other people. It's a scriptural principle. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we're drawn out from our own thoughts, cares, concerns, and issues to help others and be a blessing to others. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Verse 18, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they're red like crimson, they shall be as wool or white like wool. And so here it is. Cease to do evil, what? Learn to do well. I remember I, as a new Adventist Christian, I was raised a Baptist, loved the Lord, followed Him. I learned some new things, began to observe Sabbath. As it got college age, I went off to Weimar College. I went there because that's where Libby was at. Yeah. I stayed long enough to know she would leave with me. Weimar College has blessed and been a blessing to many, many people with their health stuff. But as a 19-year-old kid, literally a bean pole, I couldn't gain weight. I mean, when I wanted to play football, the coach told me to put a, a couple of bricks in my back pocket. I just literally couldn't gain weight for nothing, and I went out there to Weimar, and it seemed like there was an unwritten rule, like if it tastes good, spit it out real fast. It just wasn't palatable food for me. 
And if Libby wouldn't have snuck off campus with me every Sunday morning and took me to Burger King where I could get a double quarter pounder with cheese, I think I'd have starved to death. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, but... One of the things is, is when you stop one thing and you replace it with something else, you do have to try to make it somewhat palatable. The instance of music, if you're in one kind of music and you go to another, there may be some music that literally will not hold your attention, no matter how hard you try. And if you need to change your diet and you go to lettuce, you may give up in time. And yet there's certain other healthy food that you can put in the place of the unhealthy stuff and never miss the bad stuff if it's fixed well. So cease to do evil, learn to do well, but do the well well. That's important too. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Here today, I want to just ask you, how's it been with you and the Lord this last year? The world's been kind of crazy. But that can be a wake-up call for you. You don't have to take the end of one year and the beginning of the next as the time to make your decisions, i.e. resolutions and changes. But you could. There's no reason you shouldn't. How's it been with your health this year? How's it been with your time reading the Bible? Or with your personal entertainment choices? Where's the Lord been in your finances this year? Tithes, offerings, or debt reduction? Are there things that you want to begin to cease, but learn something else to do well? And then, last but certainly not least, what would the Lord have you do in the coming year that would benefit others in need? If you do want to make it a New Year's thing, you've got a few days to pray about it and think about it. December 26th today. In just a few days, you truly can look at 2020 in hindsight. But what does the foresight look like? How is God leading you? I invite you to pray about a thing or two. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart. We're all different. We're all individuals. We're all dealing with our own things. And your circumstances certainly aren't mine and vice versa. But the Lord will certainly speak to you where you're at with what you're dealing with, just as He will to me. And so how is it with you and the Lord? And will you take the next few days to pray about and think about? And even perhaps begin right now. For at no point does the Bible encourage us to put off a decision. It always says today. Today, today is the day of salvation. Choose you this day. It doesn't hurt to choose today and then take a couple of days to get ready to get started either. But think about it, pray it through. And walk with the Lord in the coming year. Loving Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor we have to think through resolutions, to think through commitments made in Scripture. And we thank you for this one principle. It may not help us all in every area we're struggling in, but it certainly can help some of us in some of the areas we're struggling in to cease to do evil and learn to do well. And it certainly will benefit us all to learn more and more to focus on others in need. In Jesus' name, bless us to do that, we pray. Amen. I forgot about the kids' sermon quiz. Kids, y'all want to do it next time? Here we go. Just a second. Let me scroll up to it and we'll give it to you. Here it is. 
What was the sweet roll cut with? A knife, a fork, a spoon, or believe it or not, a plastic gym card? D, a plastic gym card. What passages gave a Bible example of a resolution in the sermon? Was it Psalms 101, Genesis 3, 1 John 4, or John 3? Psalms 101, that's right. And then fill in the blank. Cease to do what? Evil, Evil learn to do Learn to do well or good. That's right. Okay, how many times did we say the word resolution today? I don't know, but Sister Bev is the expert on that. You can see her out at the uh, welcome table and get your lollipop kids if you kept up with that. Thank you so much. You're dismissed. <laughs>